Hello and welcome to another automation car build where today uh, I've started to um, to loosen up the um, sort of the way I build cars. Uh, I did originally build this car as a light sports car, sort of rival to the Mazda MX-5. I think in general I just tried to make it score well in the light sports category, uh, especially light sports budget. Um, as you see I've done here fairly well. Anyway, yeah, here's how it looks. Done a nice, interesting design here. Sort of updated the grill a bit. I mean, this is the most modern car I've done. 2014, a year before the ND MX-5 came out. Uh, since this is a 2010 body, I don't want to go too far, otherwise it'd start giving me negative effects on all the categories. But yeah, it's... I don't know, I kind of like this, and I've sort of tried to continue it to the, uh, to the rear. It doesn't really work since the number plate's square, but, um... And now I suppose we remove the number plate and just put like a sort of grill there that could be the number plate holder. I don't know, but yeah, I I think it looks in general quite neat. I've done um, a bit of interesting things like that uh, indicator there is actually the same shape as the headlight. I've just shrunk it and then changed the um, uh, yeah changed the uh, color of the glass and you know little things like that. I don't know. I think this is quite interesting design uh still not entirely sold on these tail lights but uh you know i don't know it looks good enough but yeah I'm not sure if it really fits in and then the diffuser here that's just um, a uh, front splitter but, you know i don't know i think it looks pretty good but um yeah i suppose uh let's walk you through it so chassis uh all steel ahs steel here uh advanced high strength uh, steel, um, obviously monocoque chassis with a front longitudinal uh, engine because, well, obviously rear wheel drive, uh, double wishbone front suspension and double wishbone on the we on the rear. It's uh, sort of a nice balance between you know getting a nice sporty and comfortable setup but not being as costly as multi-link or push rod. Uh, the engine, it's a 1.6 litre. Uh, rather low um, stroke, at least, well, now I would have considered this quite high um, a few weeks ago, but yeah, after building the Fiat Multiplier, I've seen the the uh, the light, as I guess, um, and you know, I've started using higher stroke to reduce the weight of uh, engines, so yeah, it uh, doesn't rev quite as high as I'd like it to, but I want to keep that weight down. Would have liked to have gone it under 100 kilograms, but uh, yeah, I wanted it to be um, around the 1.6 mark. The um, uh, the Mazda MX-5 has a 2-litre engine with, that makes about 150 horsepower and 1.5 that makes around 130. So, you know, I'm within that ballpark. Um, yeah, um, do I have a head cam, obviously, with four valves of cylinder. Gone with VVL just to get that power up, but also give it quite a nice, smooth and drivable torque curve at least i think that is you know it's um generally quite good i mean you know obviously it is towards the sportier end but uh i don't know i think that's quite good all cast internals no point going with her uh, hyper hyper mutectic uh, i i can't remember how to pronounce that i used to be able to but now i can't there we go uh cam profile of 59 um i suppose could go up to 60 uh, just because rain numbers, um, but yeah, haven't actually filled out the, uh, octane value, um, I don't know, maybe, uh, well, change it along the way probably, but yeah, uh, a rather high valve profile just to give it a bit more power, uh, but also obviously, uh, lower cam profile helps with fuel efficiency, uh, it's naturally aspirated, uh, multi-point fuel injection, didn't want to go with direct injection because, I mean, it's almost double cost. And, you know, while there are quite a lot of benefits, I just don't think it's worth it, to be honest. Um, throttle per cylinder, because, well, if I went with single, then there's not really enough. Um, you can't, it limits the power too much, is the issue. And it's also heavier, somehow. Um, you know, having one throttle, but there we go. Um, does look nice, though. Um, uh, but, yeah, uh fairly rich fuel uh, mixture. I mean, I could lean it slightly, but yeah, as you can see there, actually hurts it quite badly. So, uh, we won't do that. Um, and yeah, uh, I suppose, yeah, I could 
make it uh, up the ignition timing a tiny bit. Went with plus one quality on the fuel system, you know, uh, just make it a bit more reliable, really. Um, the exhaust system, high, f uh, high flow freeway cat, obviously. Um, you may as well go with that with modern age. To be honest, you don't even need a catalytic converter. It helps a lot, but I'm trying to be somewhat realistic here. So yeah, a uh, catalytic converter and a straight through muffler. That gets at around the 60 decibel mark, which is sort of ideal. Uh, tubular exhaust. It is slightly restricted on the headers, but I didn't want to sort of go a bit too extreme. Um, so yeah, went with a, uh, a relatively normal uh, setup there. And um, yeah, I suppose hear what it sounds like. It sounds, it sounds okay, you know, but not really a lot to say about it. I mean, I no, kind of sounds a bit generic to be honest, but there we go. Um, oh yeah, it is convertible too, um, like the MX-5. I did originally start building with this body. This doesn't count as a convertible, despite it, you know, having a soft top. But uh, there we go. Uh, traditional white and black paint scheme. Um, rear wheel drive uh, with a manual, six speed manual. 0 to 16, 7.5 seconds, which admittedly isn't the fastest thing, but this is really about as quick as I can get it. I could probably spend ages messing around with the gear ratios. Maybe get down to like a 7.4, 7.3, possibly. I mean, yeah, to be fair, my other car actually, the uh, competition car had about the same amount of power uh, and was front wheel drive actually, but uh, did 0 to 60 in what, under 7 seconds? Something like that. It was crazy, but uh, to be fair, that was a stripped out track car essentially. Um, so yeah, tyres, 215s all around, um, that helps decrease service costs, uh, because having different size, you can see it gives a big hit to um, the uh, cost and the amount of people that can afford it. Um, just because having different size tyres, um, I don't know, I guess when you're buying them, it's cheaper to buy in sets of four or something, who knows. Um, so yeah, um, two piston uh, vented brakes on the front and um, yeah one piston on the rear um, yeah uh, fairly standard setup here larger brakes on the rear but uh, yeah brake bias definitely set towards the front so that it uh, it's nice and balanced obviously um, nothing to really note on the aerodynamics front and uh, very standard interior it would actually improve it massively by just removing everything but I didn't want to uh, I didn't want to go extreme because at the end of the day this is still a rival to the Mazda MX-5 in real life uh, so yeah you know I could have tried to make it score perfectly in light sport budget but didn't want to uh, electric variable steering because well, it's almost the exact same as variable hydraulic but better in every single way like there is very little reason to ever go with a variable hydraulic once you have variable electric. In fact, I don't. There's a single positive thing. All right, it's a tiny bit safer. Well, there we go. Um, but yeah, uh, electronic stability control and launch control because yeah, you need launch control with your 0.9 percent wheel spin. Uh, basic safety because you know we're gonna die like real men or something. I don't know. Uh, very basic suspension, uh, semi-active sway bar really being the only advanced thing, but yeah, it uh, helps it score nicely, and I mean, at the end of the day, comfort isn't a key thing, particularly still, I did try to go a bit soft, didn't go ultra race car, try and make it drivable um, still, but um, yeah, uh, it's, you know, it works. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, what else? Uh, yeah, as you can see, the market scores quite well in the budget categories for uh, sports and track. Um, and yeah, yeah, that's sort of where I was aiming for. Uh, so yeah, um, I suppose really I'd, I'd put like a 20% markup. This is uh, far cheaper though than the uh, MX-5 is, because the MX-5's uh, something like, what was it, like 25? So be about here, um, 
$25,000, I think. So yeah, I'd probably put like a 20% markup, and even there, it's still over 100% uh, or 100 desirability. So you know, it's definitely uh, quite good. Um, so yeah, I suppose let's just see how it goes around the track. Yeah, lap time of just under 1 minute 32 seconds. I mean, you know, I'm not expecting this to be uh, insanely fast, but, uh, you know, still a fairly respectable time, uh, I think. Uh, but yeah, anyway, um, thank you for watching. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe, and until next video, uh, goodbye.